Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try to do that satellite that takes care of both the Molnia orbit satellite contract and the communications test satellite contract, but probably we'll only do one and we'll have to do a different launch for the other one. Uh, this sure has a lot of current reward right now, uh, but I also wanted to pick up the geostationary satellite contract and we will build a Deneb rocket to try and take care of that on the other pad on ELA-4. So I've already uh, built that and we'll pick that up since it lets us pick it up. And that would only leave the Tundra Orbit Satellite in this targeted satellite program. So the Deneb launcher that will launch the geostationary satellite looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a three engine, a three gamma two upper stage here. So we've got the rest of the Deneb rocket with the Viking engines. Uh, four down there and then one here that is more vacuum optimized and then we have three gamma twos firing all at the same time in order to bring a three ton payload to orbit and um, it occurs to me belatedly that actually we only have 15 tons of core there so we can't really uh we'll underutilize that i think so yeah we've got three there if we only put two the burn time will not be good so we need three. And then we have three of other engines. We've got three Arabies, well, AJ-1027s, and then three of those ORM-65 variants, the RDA-1-300. And that all adds up to, um, well, hopefully enough, right? We need 2,400 to boost up from a low Earth orbit. We need 2,400 to boost up to geostationary transfer orbit and then 1,400 to circularize. So altogether, we need 3,800, and we have 3,900, and let's hope that that's good. <laughs> so uh, there's a little bit of inclination correction that needs to happen, but we are at Kuru, so it's not that bad. So that is the idea. It's all within the burn times technically, as long as they actually work. And then we have the 25 units of ComSat payload in there, uh, plus sufficient solar power. I mean, we don't need to keep this going forever, so it'll be all right. And it's still got the cosmic ray science and magnetic scan and micrometeorite detection. Probably one of those is already done. Or not. Uh, or not. Uh, let me check the comms anyway. I don't think... Uh, you know what? Let's just not do the science. I think it'd be better not to do science with this one. Let's just do a straight comms... Uh, straight uh, geosynchronous satellite test without any bells or whistles. Uh, you know what, I'll just slap on a Computron 16 and we'll turn off the core comms. And the tank we have to uh, tool here is the tank for the AJ-1027 since we normally did not have three of them. So, yep, uh, we've tooled that. And that'll still be dumb fire. Uh, it will not be a controlled fire. We'll have to spin up first. So we can reduce the power consumption because this antenna is capable for lunar comms. And right now it says duration one day, but that's because this is active avionics. If we shut down avionics, it's perpetual to a great degree. So it'll have a long, long potential duration. So that gives us a little bit more delta V overall. Now we have nearly 4,000 up there. Okay. So there we have it, the dead MG. You know, save it like that. And we need to actually upgrade the GSE on the pad. Oh, the height is too much. Oh, that's the wrong pad. Yeah, okay, height is fine. We just need to upgrade the GSE. The GSE renovations at ELA-4 are going to take a little bit of time, April 16th. So the next thing that's going to happen is the attempted launch to the Molnia slash... Um, ComSat test orbit, and we'll see how that goes. It's a pretty wide range of possible arguments of periapsis for it. 220 degrees to 320 degrees, so it's not exactly like that. But okay, we'll, we'll just try and match it, just for safety's sake. That should be close enough. It check marks the ComSat payload of 85 units and the 138 units, so that's okay. 
And our priority is this one, the communication test satellite. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Now in order to do this, we're lighting two of the Gamma 2s first, and then we're reserving one to uh, do the boost up maneuver. Okay, booster set. I think we won't ignite the engines on the next stage right away. Okay, separation. Okay, RCS. Okay, everything off, off, stop, stop, stop. Okay, so... What can we do? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do to make our lives easier, actually. So, 6,800 altogether. We do not seem to have that. Okay. And ignition. Yeah, actually, this we need all this stage as it is. So... Go for it. And 28 degrees would only be enough for the Molnia Orbit 1 if we didn't stop, sort of, midway. Okay, well, that's good enough. Okay, don't need... Uh, we've got the required periapsis, we just need to go over there and then get the required apoapsis and then we'll at least have that communication test satellite one done. Yeah, so we're not going to be boosting up over the northern latitudes or whatever, but we'll have the, sat the contract done. So then we can just pack 85 units next time. Oh, I don't think we have uh, RCS on this stage anymore. Okay, well, that's fine. The next stage is a completely controlled stage. Okay, we'll start at low throttle first. And then try high throttle. It appears to be deviating. Back to low throttle. That's wobbly though. Okay. Okay, we've got it. Let's just get a stable orbit here. Uh, contract, whoa, I, I, oh, it, it, it is, uh, taken control over the satellite from me. That's the first time I've seen it do that. We launched other ones, but it was very definite about this one. It did not want me to get my hands on this one. So we wouldn't have probably been able to do the Molnia contract one anyway. Uh, we at least tested our capability to get to that orbit and we need a little bit more. So naturally we'll be going on to trying to do a geostationary satellite. And I still had a lunar impactor contract, so I'll build that at ELA-2. For the lunar impactor, we are also going to carry the infrared radiometer, since we haven't gotten that before. And the thing is, the science that I really wanted, because it used to give a whole lot, the orbital perturbation exper experiment, well, that rather sucks. <laughs> Nine years! Nine years, really? And minimum inclination max, uh, is 50 degrees, max inclination is 130 degrees, which that's not to the moon, so we can't pack that. I will have to send that on the Molnia satellite, as a matter of fact. So we really don't have anything else to pack onto this one, except probably those the usual ones that we haven't gotten. Still haven't gotten all the micrometeorite stuff. Cosmic ray science hasn't been done at all from the moon, apparently. Uh, it just takes too long to transmit it. Now, we do have a different engine arrangement. We're using five of these MC4 610s and for basically triple their burn time. Uh, this is just for fine adjustments and we'll see how well they do. 
Oh, I moved those little panels up originally because of the RCS ports, that's why. They want the RCS ports blowing at them. Okay. Okay, slightly different lunar impactor than usual. We'll call it lunar impactor. And the lunar impactor will be done first, and then G for. Oh, we need to get our staff staff back there because um, they were removed when we were renovating. So now they're there. All right, we have a dusk launch to the moon this time. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. Ariana one doing its thing. Well, now that we've got some altitude, the sun is properly lighting our rocket. But it will set on us again. Off go the boosters. And separation the ignition. Well, we should get some science started. Okay, that's our orbit. A little bit low on the periapsis side. Probably a little bit lopsided, but... Let's see if we can make it work out for us. That's probably decisive enough. And firing. And firing. Now, do I immediately want to complete this with the little engines up top? Um, it'll depend whether we pick up Kuru at all. Okay. Separation. Well, we can activate avionics, but do I want to activate avionics? Uh, okay, we've picked up crew. We can do that then. Activate avionics and activate the engines. Okay, here it is coming in. Okay, well, the rest we can do with RCS. That's probably good enough. We could light them once again to sort of speed us into the surface if we need to. 61% wear. Yeah, that's shut down, but we're not recharging. Well, we're aiming to smack into the surface. It doesn't say we have to have comms. Well, no, it does say we have, must have power. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's turn off some of the stuff. All that stuff needs to stop. And we need to stop transmitting data. Okay, well, there won't be much science, but at least we'll survive and get the contract done. And then the contract gives 15 science, so there's that. We'll try once we get into Lunar SOI to get at least that infrared radiometer done. Infrared radiometry. Oh, the infrared radiometry is like in every biome. Yeah, I'll turn off the transmitting of the science again. And we'll stop collecting. And try and smack more definitively into the surface. Uh, maybe we should just go radial down. Ah, either way, prograde looks fine. Give them a good explosion. And part of the reason I did that was to check that they would last for the time that we have. So we went for 196 seconds on all five of them when they're rated for 57, so important to know. Okay, so I'm going to spin and make sure we have power again. I think this is the first time we're actually hitting the surface in daylight. Certainly fast enough, we made sure of that. And much velocity. Okay, we got that done. Got some extra science. Back to Space Center. Ultimately, what I would really like is early docking procedures so we can finally get the MH stuff, the bipropellant hypergolics. Um, I would like that very much. Basic capsule seems to require more things like crew survivability and human rated EDL. We could afford both of those. Um, I've decided that uh, while there may be more European specific things that I could add to the tech tree or we could check in on, I'll probably use the Mark 1 pod initially because it's general. 
you know, it's not specific like Mercury. And so, you know, it, it's, it's fine. It's generic and not national specific, nation specific or anything like that. And I'll avoid Gemini as well because, boy, everybody uses Gemini, don't they? I mean, it's just obvious. So, yeah. Um, but I do have a Hermes spacecraft that I created. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the same slot as Dinosaur. Uh, but it'll probably be more expensive. It's more capable. I'll see what might be appropriate. Um, yeah, I'll have to gauge that. But we do have generic pieces as well. This I saw the Mark II parts. This one has the Mark II inline cockpit. So that's another idea. Just make a Mark II spacecraft. What I'm mostly interested in is the better avionics and comms at the moment. Boy, they really parse it out, don't they? They've got another improved avionics in the middle here. Do they really need another tier in the middle? I mean, we could just go from this one to that one, surely. I mean, this is, does there have to be this one here? It's just... Hmm. We need more reliable solar panels if we're going to get to any other planet. But even if we have more reliable solar panels as far as these are concerned, are they actually going to operate right? Are they going to start out with the right de degradation is a important question. Good old Ranger solar panel. Maybe it's configured differently so that we can have not the wrong degradation. I don't know. I, I, I would look at these comm parts as a way to transmit more signs faster. And so they could be beneficial like that. So I'll unlock these. And then hopefully we'll get more science and then we can unlock the avionics. So I'll go like that. But let's see about a geostationary satellite and how close we get on that. All right, there's the Denim rocket here at ELA-4. And timing doesn't matter. There's no specific thing for geostationary satellites. It reads our ComSat payload. We just need to get into a happy apoapsis and periapsis. Hopefully not exactly to the meter. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, all right. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. Looks like four engines to me. And launch. We just need to go straight out initially. Then the rocket is past the speed of sound. If all goes well, this will demonstrate that it's got a capacity of three tons to orbit right now. Okay, separation and ignition. Oh no, the fuel didn't stabilize. We wiggled too much. Maybe I need separatrons there. Or, you know, hot staging or something. Um, yeah, okay, that's doomed. Well, we might be able to get the thing to orbit. Um... Let me throw all down there. Okay. Okay. Oh, shoot. I just wanted to throw. You know, this is all screwed up anyway. All right. Forget it. Forget it. Okay. So what we are going to do is put some separatrons. So it doesn't have problems. Orient I mean, we could turn on the RCS, but the RCS is actually probably a little bit weak here. Let's add four of those. We could also toss it up a little bit steeper so it's not quite so in the atmosphere, which tosses it off a little bit. It just seems like the Viking engine takes a long time to spool up. Uh, it's got 2.74 seconds spool up time. So that is a lot. Don't want a hot stage. Not a big believer in hot staging. Well, we've done all we want to do with the early lunar probes, so I'm just going to complete that. We're close to the end anyway. Probably have a little bit more of your juice left, but... Um, yep, we've completed it. We got some extra reputation and everything. And so we have early inner planet probes, or uncrewed lunar surface exploration. I have no faith in our solar panels. I have more faith in our comms eventually being good enough if we 
you know, well, we just unlocked the, well, we are unlocking that com here. I have more faith in that than I have in the solar panels, but the solar panels are sort of important. So I think we'll just go with the lunar surface exploration first. Far side lunar landing is tough. It'll be fine if we have some commsats around the moon that can relay, but we haven't really tested that out in particular. But tis the time of year to try to land on the moon, so all right, we will accept that. What does that really want? It doesn't really say there. What do you mean by mapper? Visible imaging device of level 2 or higher. I have a bad feeling about this. The improved film camera is our best visible imaging device right now, I think. This doesn't say it's level either. Early TV camera. This looks like it's a uh, level 1. Because it has a 1 there. But, <laughs> I can't be sure. It doesn't say that. Ever. It says visible imaging, but it doesn't say the level here. Right? Scintillation. These, uh, some of these have two. Basic TV camera and this is VI2. So I'm going to assume that that's number two. And we need that. And that's going to cost 40 research to get. And we also need advanced capsules era electronics research. Which is here. That's 45. So we need 85 just to get those. Okay, once more for the geostationary satellite. We'll see if our changes have worked. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. How many subtly different hypergolic fuels could you have on the same vehicle? Get RCS prepared. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, well, it held us this time. I should have tuned now. We need a lot stronger separatrons than what we've got right now, though. It's a little bit iffy. I'm okay with separating the fairings at anything less than 2 Gs, even though this sort of goes out a bit. Alright, separating fairings. Okay, we're in space. Let's get the little commutron out. And now the three gamma twos. That's quite an array, isn't it? Should be just about right for orbit. So three tons it is. You can see 2.949. And shut down. Well, I think it actually ran out. Yep, pretty much perfect. So, uh, even if we lost comms, we would have been fine. Now we need to burn right at periapsis. And hopefully we'll be picking up Kano there. Okay, well, we'll try after in orbit. I don't know if we have the power for that, but probably. We're just really low in our initial orbit here. Okay, we've got Kano. And go. Oh no, we're wobbling. Not ideal. Well, at least it's the right general direction. Or not. Not anymore, is it? At least it'll be over soon. Let's have it that like that. Okay. Um, hmm. Uh, to be honest, we just need prograde. We don't want to do that. And separate. Yep. Boop. Separation. Okay. Don't throttle up. Let's turn us to prograde, please. And we'll use two of these to try and finish the boost up right now. Spinning is fine. Just keep spinning, because these tend to wobble a bit anyway. Oh no, we've lost comms. Crikey. 
well, this isn't going to stop now. We are on an Earth escape. <laughs> That's, there's no hope. And I didn't put any science on, so... And right when we, uh, well, I mean, uh, we are almost done and we got comms back, but we're not going to be able to do anything about this. So, I'm hoping to use the geostationary contracts to get the commsats, and uh, I would like geostationary commsats. Maybe we should uh, next time toss this to a higher orbit. In principle, it can do the trick. It seems all right. It's just uh, our comms aren't so good. Um, yeah, we'll have to think of a little bit of a better strategy here, but we will, and we'll get this done. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.